Awesome. Hare Krishna, devotees. Um, so, today, Shravanam Saturday is going to be epic. It's right before we are going to start our uh, the, the prayers by uh, one of the Mahajans, Vishma Dev, from Srimad Bhagavatam. And to... First, we're doing the prayers, right? Mangla yes. Charan. Oh, yes. We are going to do Mangla Charan prayers before we start the Srimad Bhagavatam class. So, I can give the introduction later, Prabhu, then. Sure. Let's find it. You want me to share it or do you want to share it? Um, you, you, you can share, Prabhu. We have about uh, 12 minutes. Um, okay. We can okay. go a little bit over time. Not a stick on that stuff. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen. You see this? Yeah, yeah, Prabhu. Okay. You want to start out? Okay. So how how do we do this? Uh, should we do two pages each or? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. Can you zoom in a little bit, Prabhu? Okay. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyanan Janashala Kaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupah Kada Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam Adan Adana Adadana Strinam Dante Idam Yache Puna Puna Shri Madrupa Padam Bhoja Duli Syam Janma Janmani one day hum Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Shri Guru Parampara Nama Shresh Nama Tham Manu Manum Api Suchi Putram Atra Swarupam Rupam Tasya Grajam Urupurim Mathurim Ghost Radha Kundam Giri Varam Aho Radhika Madhava Sham Prapto Yasya Prati Takripya Shri Gurum Tam Natosmi He Guru Jana He Guru Gnana Dina Gnana da Dina Bando Swananda Data Karunaika Sindhu Vrinda Vanasina Hita Vatara Prasida Radha Pranaya Prachara He Dina Bando Karunika Sindho Guru Prasadam Mai Mandamude Laksha Paradhe Bahu Papa Gade Tatpada Padmes to Matis Chakrishne Prata Shriman Nav Navadvipe Dvi Netram Dvi Bujam Gurum Varabhya Pradam Shantam Smarit Tanna Mapu Purvakam Tam Tvam Gopika Vras Raves Tanayan Tikeshi Shevaya Dhikarini Guru Nijapada Padme Dasyam Pradaya Kuru Mam Raja Kanane Shri Radhan Gri Sevana Rase Sukhinim Sukhabando Shri Guru Pramananda Premananda Phala Prada 
व्रजानंदप्रदानंदेवयम मोजया नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस सर सा, सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांता सरस्वते नामिने श्री वृषभानवी देवी दे दयिताय कृपा कृपाधे कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायिने प्रभव नम मधुर्योज्वला प्रेमाद्यागौराकुणाशक्तिग्रहाय भक्तिदा श्री गौरा करुणा शक्ति विग्रहाय नमोस्तुते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्रीमूर्त दीनतारिणे रूपनुग विरुद्धा सिद्धांता ध्वांतहारिणे नमो गौराकिशोराय साक्षात वैराग्यमूर्त विप्रलंभार संबोधे पादूजयते नम नमो भक्ति विनोदा सच्चिदनंदना गौरशक्तिवरायुगवराय ते गौरवीर्भावूमेस्म निर्देशता सज्जन प्रिय वैष्णवा सार्वभौमश्रीजगन्नाथय नम वाचाकलतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गौराषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्ता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांठ राधा कंत नमोस्तुते जयता सुरत पंगोर मम मंदमतेर्गति मत्सर्वस्वापदाभोज राधा मदन मोहन दिव्यादारण्यकद्रुमदारा सिंहासनस्थ श्रीमद्राधा श्रील गोविंद देव प्रेष्ठा लिबी सेव्यमनो स्मरा श्रीमन्रासरसारंभी वंशीवत तथस्थिता कर्षाणेनुस्वनैर्गोपीर्गोपीनाथ श्रिस्तु नीन ताकूर गोड़िया के कोरिया चेन आत्मसात एतीनेर चरण बंदन तीने मोरना तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंदे नंद व्रजस्त्रीन पादरेणुमीक्षणश यासा हरी कथोदीत पुनाती भुवन हंता आद्रिर्बल हरिदास वर्य यद्राम कृष्ण चरण स्पर्श प्रमोढ़ा मानम तनोति सह गागनयोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्तोस्त
सत्यवताय नमो नम श्री नृसिंह जय नृसिंह जय जय नृसिंह प्रहलादेश जय पद्म मुखा पद्म भृंग यदा यदा हि धर्म से ग्लार्भवती भारत अभ्युत्म धर्म से तदात्मा सृजाम्यहम परत्राणाय साधूना विनाशा च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनाथा संभवा युगे युगे मन्मनाभवक्त मद्याजी ममस्कुरु मैवैश्यासी युक्त आत्मा मत्परायण सर्वधर्मात्यज मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापेभ्यो मोक्षयुच शुश्रूषान वासुदेव कथा रुचि सियान्मत्सेवया विप्र पुण्यतीर्थ निवेशना शृण्वता स्वकथा कृष्णा पुण्य श्रवण कीर्तना हृदय तस्ह्य भद्रा विधूनोती सुहृत्सता नष्ट स्वभद्रेशो नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी तदा राजस्तमो भाव कामलोभादेत एकनाधम स्थित सत्वे प्रसीदती एवं प्रसन्न मनसो भगवद्भक्ति भगवत्तत्विज्ञान मुक्त संगते भिद्यते हृदय ग्रंथी छिद्यंते सर्व संशया क्षीयते चा कर्मा दृष्ट एवात्मे मलिहय करसे बीज आरोपा श्रवण कीर्तन जले करे चिस्तारित हो फले प्रेम फल इहान मलि से नित्य श्रवणादि जल वैराग्य विद्य निज भक्ति निज भक्ति योग शिक्षापुरुषा पुराण श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य शरीर धारी कृपाबुदीस्तम अहम प्रपद्ये काल नाष्ट भक्ति योग निजम्य प्रादुष्कर्त कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम आविर्भूत पदार विंदे घाधम घाधम लियता चिंग आजानुलंबित भुजो कण कावधा संकर्तनक पितरो कमलायताक्ष विश्वभरो द्विजवरो युगधर्म पालो वंदे जगत प्रियक करुणावतारो प्रभु यू वॉन्ट द नेक्स्ट वन यू कैन फिनिश युअर ऑफ प्रभु चैतन्य कृष्ण चैतन्यो गौरंगो दुजनायक यतीना दंडीना चैव्यासीना चिरो मणि रक्ताबराधर श्रीमा नवद्वीप सुधाक प्रेम भक्ति श्री सच्चिनंदन तथा निनंद वधूतेन्दुर्वसुधा प्राणवल्लभ जानवी जीविता पति कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदा प्रभो मत्समो नास्ति पापात्मा पद्मा पद्मावती सुता श्रीमान श्री सचिनंदन पूर्वज भावोन्मत्तो जगत्रात रक्त गौर कलेवर मत्समो नास्ति पापात्मा नापराधी न च कशना परिहारे पिलज्जे किं ब्रुवे पुषोत्तम युवती यूणी यूण चुवत मनोभीरामते तन् मनो मे रमता भूमौ स्खलित पाधा भूमिवलबण जाता पराधाण 
तम एवा शरण प्रभो गोविंद वलभे राधे प्राथे ताम सदा तदीयमी जानतो गोविंदो मया सह Sorry, I'm trying to go down. There it is. Radhe Brinda Vanadhi se Karanam Ritta Vahini Kripayani Japadabja Dasyam Mahayam Pradiyatam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हरि ओम तत्सद्गोर प्रमानंदे हरि हरि बोल आम लेट्स गो ओवर अ कप द द वर्सेस वी सुपोज्ड टू गो ओवर आम So we did. I like Prabhu. Remind me, we did one day hum, right? Yeah, we did uh, that. This, this is actually a very famous verse. This is um, actually traditionally um, in New York back in the seventies. What uh, Ram Roy Prabhu says uh, happened was that they used to say this verse before the Guru Puja. It's a very traditional verse to say before Guru Puja um, because it's a prayer to the spiritual master. So, नाम श्रे सो नाम श्रेष्ठम मनुम अपि सचि पुत्रम अत्र स्वरूपम रूपम तस्याग्रजम उरुपरिम माधुरिम गोष्टवतिम राधा कुंडम गिरिवरम अहो राधिका माधवासम प्राप्तो यस्य प्रतीत कृपया श्री गुरुम तम नतोस्मि अम अलग प्रो वुड यू लाइक टू रीड द ट्रांसलेशन शर I bow down to the beautiful lotus feet of my spiritual master by whose causeless mercy I have been received I have received the supreme holy name the divine mantra the service of the son of sachi mata the association of swarup damodar rupa goswami and his older brother sanatan goswami the supreme abode of mathura the blissful abode of vrindavan the divine radha kund and govardhan hill and the desire within my heart for the loving service of shri radhika and madhava in vrindavan we got on that i i it's just so nice that um shows what the spiritual master is giving because to his he because he's a transparent by a medium um he's gifting us this this is the this is the gift he's giving us all these personalities and persons very nice yeah it's uh, it's pretty amazing you know how all of these things are always there but for so many um you know population it's never revealed but mm-hmm. only by the here it's stated causeless mercy of spiritual master so without um and you know of course uh, the spiritual master there are Uh, we all know diksha guru shiksha guru and many other gurus and i was reading in one place that all of them are at the same position in one sense and yeah it's it's uh, you know without without them all of these will be hidden it's only the mercy of these um, you know personalities in our in our in our lives especially shri la prabhupad yes um i was just watching uh proper memories and in proper memories brahmananda was um he was one of the um brahmananda was saying you know he started popularizing this philosophy um back in 71 or something that prabhupada is actually god and then brahmananda was kicked out of his con uh, he was kicked out of his con by prabhupada and then finally brahmananda came and he cried to prabhupada and he said you know i'm so sorry for calling you god and then he was telling this and then um in what and then brahmananda was sharing actually prabhupada is not god he is actually greater than god and then brahmananda starts crying at this point 
and he was saying you know he's greater than the god is in the sense that god never came to the lower east side there is no god in the lower east side the god never came but prabhupad came to help us he showed us what human life actually actually is and at this point he's like wailing he said he said where would we be without prabhupad where would we be without prabhupad so um, in that sense you know he picks us up when we we're, we're um oma gyana timrandas ya in the in the torchlight of uh, our darkness and ignorance cover our eyes are covered and then he opens it with the torchlight of knowledge very nice very nice <laughs> <clears throat> so should we uh, start with the uh, Bhagavatam class for you? Oh, sure, sure. Or do you want to go for one more? Um, it's if, already nine, nine, ten. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll start this Sri Guru Pranam next week. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So uh, it's time for uh, the official uh, introduction. <laughs> um but yes uh, so devotees thank you all for joining i know in krishna prabhu charuta uh, on zoom and we have some audience on youtube channel also so thank you so much devotees for joining today shravanam saturday session and like i had mentioned in our whatsapp communication that we have a very special speaker today and he is right here hari prabhu um we all know him um he is uh, he is young and he is so energetic it's very hard to find someone like that you know with so much enthusiasm to serve the devotees the community uh, vaishnavas all over the world not just in columbus and he is always always uh, engaged in service always thinking on how we can um, how we can bring you know uh, people to krishna consciousness and how we can inspire so we are very happy Uh, that hari prabhu has taken up this verse and i think it's only what two days that you got this notice that you will be giving the class thanks to my wife who bailed out at the last moment but uh, <laughs> in her defense we are going to india tomorrow day after tomorrow so <laughs> so let's uh, hear from uh, hari prabhu today and we are uh, going to study shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 9 text 25 to 31 which is right before the the magnanimous verses uh, the prayers by um bishma dev will start so this is uh, perfect perfect uh, verses to set the mood for that so hari prabhu please take it over hari krishna hari krishna prabhu thank you for those kind words um i am not deserving of that i am not i'm not at all enthusiastic or neither am i very fixed up in krishna consciousness i'm just um i'm just begging um krishna and my spiritual master that he just gives me some service in the morning so and then somehow service uh, allows allows uh, i i'm allowed to be even serving in some capacity so i'm very grateful for all of you for joining and everybody on youtube and and i want to offer my prostrate obeisances onto all the senior devotees on the call you are all vaishnav devotees so you are all, all worshipable and i just hope to um speak on the bhagavatam for my own purification um it's actually um nice when uh, we offer um we are asked to serve the shriman bhagavatam class because then we open up the bhagavatam and we actually try to go deep actually one of my teachers told me the best way to learn something is to learn it in such a way that you that you are expected to teach it because then you're then you're expected to know it in very deep in 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 a lot of detail so when we um are asked to serve the bhagavatam it's not that we give bhagavatam class or we have to do we're actually serving the bhagavatam this is the way to serve bhagavatam is by reading it reciting it hearing it discussing it you know and, and distributing it these are these are the ways of um of uh of serving the bhagavatam so the more we serve bhagavatam um uh, the heart will be cleansed and we will be able to understand more of the bhagavatam this is not uh the bhagavatam is not a mundane book in that you just read it once and then you understand all the concepts because krishna is always expanding his his body his his uh, um it's ever expanding uh, so this knowledge also must be ever expanding and your realization of this knowledge will also be ever expanding so you can read the same verse bhakti siddhanta saraswati he he um 
famously in 1927, uh, I think, uh, 1927, he spoke on the first verse of Bhagavatam for more than 40 days, just 40 days on, on, on one verse. And, you know, so it's, it's very purifying to, to even be able to give him the opportunity to approach such a literature and to um, even give, even be given the opportunity to read such a literature, what to speak on, what to speak on speaking it or, or, or discussing it, you know. And as Prabhupada says in Nectar Instruction, this, I, um, that he has formed this society of ISKCON. So that for the, one of the purposes is to uh, um, propagate these literatures and also to discuss these literatures among the, amongst the association of like-minded uh, uh, devotees. He says this in Nectar Instruction 5. That, that is the purpose of ISKCON, is that you come and then there's a place. Imagine like um, the before um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, there was no um, association. There was no society. So um, now is we're so uh, fortunate. We can go to almost any country and any city in the world and we can find an ISKCON center there. And then they'll be discussing the Bhagavatam. They'll be doing Hari Kirtan. They'll be having Krishna Prasad. They'll be having Tulsi Devi. They'll be having the deity of Krishna. And, you know, so this is, this is, uh, this is the whole thing, you know, and the whole, um, uh, anything you need to go back to Godhead is in any city in the world. And that is Srila Prabhupada's unique contribution. And one of the, one of, um, um, one thing that stayed constant in his life, no matter where he moved, was his crown achievement. Yeah, anybody's crown achievement would be establishing 108 temples, you know, initiating 10,000 disciples, establishing the, uh, the uh, Gaudiya Siddhanta very firmly and, you know, um, doing all this. But the one thing that stayed constant wherever he moved from 1965 to 1977 was always every night translating Bhagavatam and, and, and commentating on the Bhagavatam. That was always there. And if you look at Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he has a, um, he, Maharaj, he has a very, um, very nice remembrance. And uh, he's, uh, he, uh, he was on the BBT library party with Swatsarup Maharaj. And um, they would go to libraries around the country and they would pre present Srila Prabhupada's books. And they would say, you know, you should order a standing order. So they used to uh, distribute books before they were even written by Prabhupada. They would say, you know, they would have, give them the first canto and they'd say, you know, we're, we're going to print the rest of the cantos. We'll give, we'll send it to you then. And they used to buy it up. So he approached one professor and he's a, he was a department head, you know, and then, so he read the first, the whole first canto in, in a week. And, and then yeah, Bhakti Chitra Maharaj, back then Ganesham Prabhu, um, came up to him and, and, and said, you know, um, what do you think of it? And then um, uh, these, and uh, most um, professors of Hinduism, they're very um, um, influenced by the Advaitins, very impersonalistic. So uh, the professor said, I do not like the translation very much. It is very, it is very personalistic and, 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 it's, and it's emphasizing bhakti too much. But I will still make five standing orders because he they, it took the un, uh, un uh, he said unmitigated gall to even approach the Bhagavad Purana. The, it it takes a lot of guts to approach the Bhagavatam because the Bhagavatam is so great. If you look at some of the Bhagavad the other Bhagavatams by other other people, their Bhagavatams are like the whole Bhagavatam is like this big, and it's like this big. But it's eighteen thousand verses, so they're just summarizing. And, and then Prabhupada, he just basically, he, uh, the, the verse, the word to word, the purport, the translation, everything is given, you know, so uh, this professor was so impressed by that, he took five standing orders. So I think there's, it's in uh, New Hampshire, that college, there's five Bhagavatams on that, on that campus. And uh, one uh, disciple of Bhakti Tirtha Swami, um, his name is Murari Gupta, he went to that college and there's still the five Bhagavatams are still there. In, 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 in that college. Um, so very nice. So that, that's the kind of a little bit of um, uh, why we discuss this literature. We should ideally do this every day, but once a week is actually quite nice when we can go in depth with the association of devotees. Um, Nityam Bhagavata Seva, Prabhupada says, um, it should, Nityam actually means like forever, but Prabhupada uh, says at least once a day. Uh, once a day, you should come to come and you should read the Bhagavatam or hear the Bhagavatam, or study the Bhagavatam, and that's very nice. 
So we'll just chant quickly Jai Radha Madhava and we'll get um, into the verses, if that's okay. Hare Krishna. Um, we'll just be discussing the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Text 25. Um, I'll just say some inv invocatory prayers, um, prayers for my own um, purification and to um, begin auspiciousness. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jhayam Mudirayet Nashta Prayesu Babhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Om Ajnana Tibrandhasya Jnana Anjana Shulakaya Chakshurun Manditam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Vaisheshika Dasa Dikari Niti Namane Nama Praharsha Shilaya Prabhupada Anusharine Anindite Rite Tasmai Shastra Bhajana Chodine 
नमो ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीतिनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गौर प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बोल सो वे कैंटो वन चैप्टर नाइन टेक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव I we're just going to read I'm just going to uh, summarize all, all of them because this is quite a big um section that I took uh that is been assigned so I'll just read the the translations for each one of them and I'll kind of I've made notes on um each of the purports and I'll just summarize uh, summarize the purports and then we'll go deep into text 30 and 31 and I I would like more the, this to be a discussion than a then a just a dialogue so let me just share these verses so this is shrimad bhagavatam canto 1 chapter 9 the passing away of bhishma dev in the presence of lord krishna text 25 so in this uh, so text 25 Suta Goswami said, "Maharaj Yudhishthir, after hearing by Bhishma Dev speak in that appealing tone, asked him in the presence of all the great rishis about the essential principles of the various religious duties." So, in this verse, um, Yudhishthir Maharaj is finally accepted that he is going to um, lead the lead the kingdom and lead the Pandavas, and now he's. inquiring um from bhishma dev now in this verse especially it says in the presence of all great rishis so shri prabhupad go uh, um says in the purport that bhishma dev this is to show uh, maraj dishtir is indicating that bhishma dev was the most qualified to speak on these uh on these subject on these subject matters even more than the rishis and even more than vyasadev who was um who was present also who is non different from who is a shaktavish avatar of of the lord and so and at this point you know you think you know you're in a bed of arrows and you know you don't have um and the last thing you want to be doing is at as answering questions so um so the point was so this point comes up why is yudhishthir asking bhishma dev these questions um and three things from the purport that um that uh were that came into mind was bhishma dev was considered the senior to everyone that was assembled there in terms of the two the the family the pandavas and the kauravas bhishma dev is considered the most senior if you remember from first chapter of bhagavad gita um one point of 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 pride for duryodhan was that bhishma dev was on his side and and you know so he he considered his his um his um uh his uh various uh his project or the the or, or his attempt at trying to win the war the attempt the attempt to win he considered that to be a success it, it's going to be success because bhishma dev was present and you know and, and so bhishma dev was pro- was the only thing kind of going for them as kauravas and and uh, according to bhagavad gita and then when bhishma dev blew his conch prabhupad writes in the purport that um when uh, so when bhishma dev blew his conch it was a sig- it was signifying the uh, lord krishna the the sound of his conch so doom was inevitable for for bhishma dev so uh, bhishma dev the, the point is that bhishma dev is considered the most senior so that's why it's good to ask him him the question and you know so and then also another reason what that shri prabhupad points out is that lord krishna actually inspired yudhishthir to go uh, to um ask this question to uh, to bishma uh, to bishma dev and krishna also wanted to show the glories of bishma dev even though it may not be like a, a particular etiquette a, a person is on the bed of arrows and you're going to ask him questions at you know he's about to leave his body or when he decides he wants to leave his body but krishna wanted to show the glory of the lord the father wants to wants the son to be glorified 
that is the natural thing. The father wants to uh, have the son be um, uh, better than himself. So more than the glorification of Krishna, um, Krishna actually likes when his devotees are glorified. And that's why the Bhagavatam is such a, it's called Amala Purana, because um, if, you, if you look at the whole Bhagavatam, it is just about devotees. It is more, less about Krishna and more about the devotees. If you look at the whole story of uh, um, Prahlad Nirsingha, um, actually n- n- the incarnation of Nirsingha Dev is mentioned before, before the Bhagavatam. It is mentioned in the Nirsingha Purana. It's mentioned in the Vedas. So, but what is the, the special significance of this incarnation of, uh, uh, in, in Bhagavatam is that in these 10 chapters of, of, the, seventh, of, of the seventh canto, which is dedicated to Nirsingha Dev, uh, de- dedicated to this pastime, it mainly focuses on Prahlad's. Prahlad's teachings to his, uh, to his classmates. What is Prahlad hearing inside the womb? What is Prahlad's prayers to Narsingha Dev when he comes out? What is, Nar- and then later on in the canto, it's still Narada Muni, in, uh, the um, Yudhishthira Narada Muni, and then Narada Muni gives some instructions to Prahlad. You know, so it is all about Prahlad. It is the glorification of the devotee. So in this, just by this example, you can see that, um, you can see that the devotee is the one that is glorified. So Krishna wants to show the glory of Bhishma Dev. So that is the um, that is one that is one some of the reasons why um, the, this question is proposed. Um, let's go through twenty six. I actually think we can go through twenty six. I I really like that point. Um, let's go. I'll just read the Sanskrit. Purusha Svabhava Vihitan Yata Varanam Yata Shramam Vairagya Ragopadhi Bhyam Amnato Bhayalakshanan. Alakpur, would you like to read the translation? Sure, Prabhu. At Maharaj Yudhishthir's inquiry, Bhishmadeva first defined all the classifications of castes and order of life in terms of the individual's qualifications. Then he systematically, in two-fold divisions, described counteraction by detachment and interaction by attachment. Yeah, so now we're going to go, Vishnu is talking about Varnashrama. You know, this Varnashrama system is Krishna's, it is Krishna's system. Um, Krishna himself um, uh, proposes this system and, and, and Bhishma Dev is, is, is very much in the line is, is uh, approving what Krishna is saying in terms of Varnashram, caste and orders of life. So let's go through the purport and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pause at any point. And at the end of the verse, I'll pause and we'll see if there's any discussion. It's, it's a little bit longer, but I, I feel like it's very nice for us. Actually, I remember uh, Mother Urmila was saying in a recent class, um, the famous Gopi Parana Dhana Prabhu. Um, the Sanskrit, the Sanskritist, um, he said, one of the last things he said was, um, so, so I think he was leaving his body due to cancer or something. Um, and one of the final things he said is that it, the devotees of ISKCON needs to need to know more about Prabhupada's idea of Varnashram and Dharma Shastra. He said the way to live, because now we've understood the spiritual ideal and going through that, but how do we gradually progress? That's how a society, when we have a society, we have to grab, there, there's some, there's not, and not everybody's going to be a superstar, like Swami, right, right at 25, things like that. Um, you need, some people may need more help. And this Varnashram system is a gradual way on how to help somebody get to the self-realization, or they may be lost in the path. And we might, if we put a too high of a standard for everyone, not everybody will be able to reach that standard and then they'll end up degrading themselves. So that's what uh, one thing that Gopi Parandana Prabhu said. Um, we can go to the purport. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The conception of four castes and four orders of life as planned by the Lord himself, Bhagavad Gita 4.13, is to accelerate transcendental qualities of the individual person so that he may gradually realize his spiritual identity and thus act accordingly to get free from material bondage or conditional life. In almost all the Puranas, the subject matter is described in the same spirit. And so in the Mahabharata, it is more elaborately described by Bhishma Dev in the Shanti Purva, beginning from the 60th, 60th chapter. 
Um, actually, a lot of these principles that the Bhagavatam is just kind of touching on, it's um, described very deeply in the, in the Mahabharata. And um, devotees have studied the Mahabharata deeply. We can ask Naveen Krishna Prabhu later um, for some details on this. But Prabhupada gives us a very um, nice um, summary of what Bhishma Dev is saying. Um, the Varnashram Dharma is prescribed for the civilized human being to train him to successfully terminate human life. Self-realization is distinguished from the life of the lower animals engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. Bhishma Dev advised for all human beings the nine qualifications. So these are nine things Bhishma Dev said all human beings should do. Not to become angry, two, not to lie, three, to equally distribute wealth, four, to forgive, five, to beget children only with one's legitimate wife, six, to be pure in mind and hygienic in body, seven, not to be inimical towards anyone, eight, to be simple, and nine, to support servants or subordinates. So these are nine things that Bhishma Dev is saying are, that must be, um, that must be followed by, by everyone, especially human beings, um, that human beings are now that what we think of human beings are just kind of us, um, but the, our acharyas and then our, um, uh, our, the Shastra has a very different understanding of what a human being is. Yeah, just because you have a body doesn't mean that uh, the, the human body doesn't necessarily make you a civilized human being. As, as we, can, we can see that, um, the, it's qualified here. One cannot be called a civilized person without acquiring the above mentioned preliminary qualities. Besides these, the brahmanas, the intelligent men, the administrative men, the mercantile community, and the laborer class must acquire special qualities in terms of occupational duties mentioned in all the Vedic scriptures. For the intelligent men, controlling the senses is the most essential qualification. It is the basis of morality. That is such a, to be moral means to control the senses. It's the most essential thing. Now, if, if, uh, um, if the world would just learn how to control their senses, um, then it, it will be a very moral world. But because the senses are not controlled, so much havoc is happening. Um, um, as we know in the Ramayan, there's the, the character of Ravana, who is called Dasam Mukha. Dasam Mukha means 10 heads. And, 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 and also there's another name for, uh, for Ravana in that each one of his senses was like a, had, had, a, a, had a face of its own. And it, and it was acting on its own will. So the nose wanted to do something. The eye, there was nothing harmonious about him. The eyes wanted its own enjoyment. The ears wanted its own enjoyment. So Ravana was like that. But then um, uh, the father of Lord Ram is Dasaratha, who is said to have controlled the 10 directions and also have uh, be so, uh, very controlled with the senses also. Um, just a little juxtaposition there. Um, we'll continue. Um, for the intelligent men, controlling the senses is the most essential qualification. It is the basis of morality. Sex indulgence, even with a legitimate, legitimate wife, must also be controlled, and thereby family control will also follow. An intelligent man abuses his abuses his great qualifications if he does not follow the, way, the Vedic way of life. So in this sentence, Prabhupada is saying that we... Um, it's not that we are enjoying, we're actually abusing our qualification. So it shows that we are actually a very high, we, we deserve much better. We are, we're living, uh, we're, we, are, we are very deserving of much more. Krishna says that I am a pearl, I'm a, I'm a string, I'm the thread that runs through the pearls. Krishna is not saying I am a string running through garbage, it's running through newspaper. He's not saying that, he's saying we're pearls, we're, we're like gems, each one of us. But then when we don't follow the Vedic way of life or these controlling our senses, actually we're, we're not living up to our, our, our ultimate potential. We're not living up to that. This means that he must seriously make a study of the Vedic literatures, especially of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. For learning Vedic knowledge, 
one must approach a person who is cent percent engaged in devotional service. Cent percent, one, one cent is 100. So 100 percent engaged in devotional service. He must not do things which are forbidden in the Shastras. Um, a person cannot be a teacher if he drinks or smokes. Very, <laughs> um, and, and, he's, and I don't think Prabhupada's meaning drinking water. <laughs> he drinks, uh, so he cannot drink or smoke. In the modern system of education, the teacher's academic qualification is taken into consideration without evaluation of his moral life. Thus, the result of education is misuse of high intelligence in so many ways. And now Prabhupada talks about each one of the Varnas. Um, we'll learn about e each, one, each one of them. It's actually quite nice. The Kshatriya, the member of the administrative class, is especially advised to give charity and not to accept charity in any circumstance. Modern administrators raise subscriptions for some political functions, but never give charity to the citizens in any state function. It is just a reverse in the injunction of the Shastras. The administrative class must be well versed in the Shastra, but, is, but must not take to the profession of teachers. The administrators should not never pretend to become nonviolent and thereby go to hell. When Arjuna wanted to become a nonviolent coward, so <laughs> Prabhupada's going quite is <laughs> is he's, he's, he's hammering that point. When Arjuna wanted to become a nonviolent coward on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he was severely chastised by Lord Krishna. The Lord degraded Arjuna at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of nonviolence. The administrative class must be personally trained in military education. Cowards must not be elevated to the presidential throne by dint of numerical votes and only. The monarchs were all chivalrous persons and therefore monarchy should be, maintain, should be maintained provided the monarch is regularly trained in the occupational duties of a king. In fighting, the king or the president should never return home without being hurt by the enemy. Um, Jade Dweyla Maharaj was telling me once that in the first and second cantos especially, only, only this is very special in the first and second cantos, Prabhupada is utilizing italics. In some point that Srila Prabhupada really wants to emphasize a lot, only in the first and second cantos he did this. He never, For some reason, he didn't do it all the way to the 10th canto. Um, he, he uses this italics. So it, Prabhupada is considering this a very important point. In fighting, the king or the president should never return home without being hurt by the enemy. The so-called king of today never visits the war field. He is very much expert in artificially encouraging the fighting strength in the hope of false national prestige. As soon as the administrative class is turned into a gang of mercantile and labor men, the whole machinery of government becomes polluted. Um, this is um, actually, if you even look at the US military, um, the, the president, the, the president of the United States is also called the commander in chief. The president, um, at least formally, he's considered the um, leader of the army. So he, he directs what the army is supposed to do, what missions it needs to go, where, where does it need to impose itself, where does it need to withdraw out of. Um, but you tech, usually it should be that the, the leader is actually leading. But actually what we see now is that the leader stays at home and unnecessarily people go and, 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 and die uh, um, without a proper leader. So that is a very sad thing. But... Um, it's good to know the, the standard, at least, that we that to aspire for. Um, Alec Prue, you want to uh, you want to read about the Vaishyas? The Vaishyas, the members of the mercantile communities, are especially advised to protect the cows. Cow protection means increasing the milk productions, namely curd and butter. Agriculture and distribution of the foodstuffs are the primary duty, duties of the mercantile community, backed by education in Vedic knowledge, and trained to give in charity. As the Kshatriyas were given charge of the protection of the citizens, Vaishyas were given the charge of the protection of animals. Animals are never meant to be killed. Killing of animals is a symptom of barbarian society. For a human being, agriculture 
agriculture agricultural produce fruits and milk are sufficient and compatible foodstuffs the human society should give more attention to animal protection the productive energy of the laborer is misused when he is occupied by industrial enterprises industry of various types cannot produce the essential needs of man namely rice wheat grains milk fruits and vegetables the production of machines and machine tools increases the artificial living fashion of a class of vested interests and keeps thousands of men in starvation and unrest this should not be the standard of civilization yeah this this, this is a very good qualification of the vaishyas um every class of the of the varnashram sister is, is required and it's um they they all have a very specific purpose so if you look at the this is uh, vaishyas are are mainly de- dealing with the animals and animals are such a uh, important concept in the vedic culture and actually it's um it's very sad what's happening in various places where they're killing animals like in a line a slaughterhouse um i i was actually on high street um on on uh, and me and aiden prabhu were distributing books and one person said do i um what's wrong with um eating meat you know cuz the the god of the bible um he uh, bible and many other religions they allow for meat eating um, um but if you look at the old testament um you can see that god at first he didn't allow it he said you eat the greens and the fruits and and then okay so maybe uh, and then he uh, he brought up the famous argument that jesus ate a fish jesus may have eaten a fish based on time place and circumstance but does it warrant and 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 time place and circumstance may warrant that that maybe there's no other food around so you must eat uh, you must eat something but does that warrant a billion dollar industry where over a billion fish are killed every day where uh, and i think that the statistics now is that 84000 animals are killed every second every second uh, in the world 84000 animals are killed does that warrant that just because one thing that he did does that warrant such a big industry it's not and it's also not required to live it's not required for um sustenance you can eat a very healthy diet of grains fruits vegetables milks milk and yogurt and so many nice things and you can get all your protein and all your vegetables and things like that and you and you don't have to cause unnecessary suffering to people so prabhupada is really emphasizing that um so i um does somebody want to volunteer and read the sh- the one about the shudra class i can read sure prabhu thank you thank you Okay, the should should the one second. The shudra class is less intelligent uh, and should have no independence. They are meant for rendering service, sincere service to the three higher sections of the society. The shudra class can attain all comforts of life simply by rendering service to the higher classes. It is especially and enjoined that a shudra should never bank money. as soon as the shudras accumulate wealth it will be misused for sinful activities in wine women and gambling wine women and gambling indicate that the population is degraded to less than shudra quality the higher caste should always look after the maintenance of the shudras and they should provide them with old and used garments a shudra should not leave his master when the master is old and invalid and the master should keep the servants satisfied in all respects the shudras must first of all be satisfied by some precious food and clothing before any sacrifices perform in this age so many functions are held by spending millions but the poor laborer is, is not sumptuously fed or given charity clothing etc the laborers are thus dissatisfied and so they make agitation thank you prabhu yes yeah, so this is the describing about the shudra um and even they have a position and and shudras are generally they're um they're um we're we're not talking about um the um the perverted reflection of the caste system that we see in india currently we see we're talking about the essence of the caste system and shudras are generally considered to have um to not be able to control their senses that's why um 
uh, the, um, the, the salary is given and they're, they're supposed, but they're supposed to be taken care of. And what we see in India is that they're, they're considered uh, like Dalits and they're not supposed to be touched or, or stuff like that, but they're supposed to be taken care of. There's some yagyas. There are a lot of yagyas when we feed food to the brahmanas, actually um, garments and food should also be given to the shudras. And that, that's, that's a very um, important aspect of any yagya. So um, they must be taken care of. And every aspect of Krishna's uh, uh, um, plan is divine. And if you look at what we're um, talking about, if in what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talked about, Devi Varnashrama, he's saying, uh, uh, go, go deeper, go deeper, as he's telling to Raman and the Roy. Um, but the reason why the, this, um, this section is there, there is that if you look at how Varnashram is taken, it's meant for uh, um, a lot of people, it means just to lead a religious life. But for the Bhagavatam's implications of what, um, uh, of what the uh, Varnashram means, is that the Bhagavatam saying that every uh, cat, every, every um, um, uh, Brahmana, Kshatriyas, Vaishya, Shudras should all be to, uh, dedicated to Krishna. That is the point that the brahmanas are doing. As we, as we see in the tenth canto, the brahmanas are 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 are, are not very uh, favorably spoken when they didn't give the food to Krishna, because Krishna came and asked, Krishna Baram came and asked, "Can we have some food?" No, no, you cannot go. Go to the women. Uh, um, the, then they went to the women, uh, the wives of the brahmanas, and then they gave them food. Now, who is more pleasing to Krishna? So actually, the all the castes, brahmanas, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, no matter where you're, where we are at. We are actually um, um, we're actually just looking towards pure devotional service unto Krishna. That is that is the point. Um, so that is the point of the, the Bhagavatam is trying to make. Um, I'll just read the last paragraph. The Varnas are to speak different uh, class, classifications of different occupations, and ashram dharma is gradual progress on the path of self-realization. Both are interrelated, and one is dependent on the other. The main purpose of ashram dharma is to awaken knowledge and detachment. The brahmachari ashrama is a training ground for the prospective candidates. In this ashrama, it is instructed that this material world is not actually the home of the living being. The conditioned souls under material bondage are prisoners of matter, and therefore self-realization is the ultimate aim of life. The whole system of ashram dharma is a means to detachment. One who fails to assimilate the spirit of detachment is allowed to enter into family life with the same spirit of detachment. Therefore, one who de attains detachment may at once adopt the fourth order, namely renounced, and thus live on charity only, not to accumulate wealth, but to just keep the body and soul together for ultimate realization. Householder life, household life is, is for one who is attached, and the vanapras and sannyas order of life are for those who are detached from material life. The brahmachari ashrama is especially meant for training both the attached and detached. So we're just getting a summary of, of, uh, of, uh, of the ashramas. We went through the varnas, now we're going through the ashramas. The brahmachari ashram is actually considered the basis of, of all the other ashramas. It's, uh, it's described the, uh, um, the brahmacharya, the brahmacharya ashram. Uh, if you look at the the Lord, the legs are the brahmacharya ashram. The grihastha is the belly. The vanaprast is the chest, and the sannyasis are the head uh, of of um, the whole varnashram system. So everybody should actually take to this um, these uh, this ashram system very seriously. Um, all young people, uh, it's described. All young people at the age of twenty five must practice the brahmacharya uh, must practice the brahmacharya ashram. That means uh, sex life is completely off the table and controlling the senses. And, and, and Prabhupada is giving the real um, reason why we, um, why we go through, uh, why the, ash the Brahmachar Ashram is there. It's saying, um, one who fails, um, maybe, it's, maybe it's another one. But Prabhupada was saying that the Brahmachar Ashram is there for knowing that you're not the proprietor. It's to understand you're not the proprietor of this world. So when you have some rigid, strict training and you know how that leads you to success in life, wherever you go, whether you hold that, assimilate that understanding of detachment, then you can go directly be a sannyasi. And if you do want to become a grihasta, that leads you for success in the grihasta ashram also. Now, there, 
every, everybody's individual path is very different. But ideally, if, if every young man can be in the Brahmachari ashrama and then go to the Grihastha ashrama and then go to the Bhavana Prastha ashrama and become sannyas, sannyas ashrama, that would be the ideal process. But uh, again, everything is individual. And, and that is um, uh, that should be discussed with the bona fide spiritual master about how, how that will look like for each person. Um, does anybody have any reflections or thoughts? I know we're running out of time. I'll just take maybe 10, 10 more minutes um, to speak. Anybody have any reflections or thoughts on what has been so, spoken so far? Okay, we will continue on um, with the next verse. Um, let me go to, this is uh, text 26, right? Um, we just we just read that Prabhu. So this will be twenty seven. Let me get my notes out. Um, so twenty seven. It's it's mentioning that um, um, he then explained by divisions acts of charity, the pragmatic activities of a king, and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees, both briefly and extensively. So. In this purport that Srila Prabhupada is is, talk, is is describing that the brahmachari is meant for sacrifices. This is a brahmachari, um, a traditional brahmacharya. They perform a lot of sacrifices. They do humble service under the under the feet of the spiritual master. They live with the spiritual master, um, uh, ideally in, in the guru's ashrama, and they just perform sacrifices all day. And the grihastha's main duty is to to uh, to do charity. And it's to give charity to the uh, to the other ashramas. That's why it's considered the belly. Um, and, and and then retired life for the vanaprastas and the sannyasis are uh, penances and austerities are what would define that ashrama. So yeah, I think it's in this purport itself, twenty seven. Um, it's describing that brahmacharya life. It's um, um, yeah, in the brahmachari life, the training is sufficiently imparted as that one may understand that the world as property belongs to the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead. So that's one of the uh, great effects that you don't, you lose that. If you start um, from the beginning of life, from a very young age, you will lose that. You will, the reason why we're here is because we have that idea that we're the Purusha. We, uh, we think we're the controllers of the world. We want to control um, our life. We want to control our money. We want to control other people. But then if you, uh, from Komare Tachare Pragyo Dharman Bhagavatani Ha Durlaba Manusham Janma. So that from a young age, traditionally Brahmachari Ashram starts when you're six or seven. Um, from a young age, if you remember that, you will forget that Purusha that I'm trying to enjoy. And if it's taken very seriously, then, uh, then uh, that whole then the the projection back to Godhead is actually very sure um, because you're losing losing that purusha atmosphere. Um, so grihastha life is uh, in in this verse it's considered a charity, um, and you know it's it also does have some aspects of enjoyment. Um, and actually, but what Prabhupada is just summarizing here is that everybody's energy. Um, Grihastha and Brahmachari, Vanaprastha, Sannyasi, they're all coming from Krishna. And the actions of energy, which is considered the fruit, they must be given to the Lord in the shape of service, or it's actually bhoga. And as we know from Krishna, he says in the third chapter, I think 27th verse, he's saying that when uh, devotees take uh, the fruits of the sacrifices, the bhoga, you're actually barely eating only sin. So that is very important. So as we know in Bhagavad Gita 9.27, Jadduhosi Dadasi Yat Tapasyasi Kaunte Yat Tatkurusva Madarpanam, that everything, our words, action, deeds, austerities, um, sacrifices, must all be all be used for Krishna. So that's a very important point. Um, next, Prabhupada talks about Rajo Dharma. Um, I'm just going to skim over that because we're um, going uh we just want to get to the uh, main main point um he's saying that every uh, so the king is considered the father of everyone 
And there's no political consideration in, in how he moves his chess pieces and how he um, does his strategy. He's working solely for the prosperity of the citizens. And Prabhupada's making the comparison with what we're seeing today. It's actually, the, the system is actually leading to havoc because our leaders are actually not trained. They're not trained to become kings and leaders. If you're um, the only qualification to be president of the United States is that you have to be born on the, um, on, on, in, in, the, in the land of the United States. So you can't be um, born anywhere else and you have to be over 40 years old. So that's not so that's not really very good qualifications. You need to learn how to um, lead and things like that. And then um, Prabhupada also says in four years, then there's another one based off uh, of of how many votes he can manipulate. And also they become um, they tend to become lazy because they impose high taxes on the on the people. And all and, and you know, but the king should actually be pious. He should be chivalrous. He should be munificent and, you know, the citizens should, uh, will ideally follow that. And it's not that the king is very um, peaceful or very uh, this and that. He's actually tough on crime as well, as we see in Parikshit Maharaj in the later part of, the, of this canto. Parikshit Maharaj was ready. He pulled out the sword of, uh, and, and, he, and he is actually supposed to kill Kali when he killed that cow, um, when, he was about, when he was in the process of beating that cow. Um, and taxes. I know it's the new year starting, so um, let me give your let me give you your Vedic tax lesson for today. Uh, so the Vedic conception of taxes is that there's no force. They didn't force you to pay your tax, and there's no encroachment. It's just that the king was entitled to one fourth of the production of everything you make. And the thing is, is that you had no incentive to keep some money for yourself. Because with pious kings, everything was in abundance. There was enough fruits, grains, property. There was heating, anything, everything for everybody. And the king's responsibility um, for human, um, but the king actually had a very important responsibility was that um, he had to make sure the energy of humanity was utilized properly. Now that's a very, um, that's a very, uh, um, tough task actually um, to make sure nobody's slacking off. So uh, the king's responsibility was that everybody's energy was utilized properly and the devotees and everybody was taken care of, especially the devotees. And Prabhupada gives another um, uh, italicized um, statement here. Uh, the king knew well, the king knew well that the Supreme Personality of God had never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees. So the, the king was very um, um, careful that the devotees of the Lord are always taken care of. And they were never, they would never um, harm the devotees and they, they would always be taken care of. That's why we see in the pastime of um, Ambarish Maharaj, he took so nice care of Durvasa Muni, even though Durvasa Muni was uh, kind of a devotee, um, he was, but even though he had some devotion and he was still a Muni, he invited him, washed his feet, you know, took care of him, and even would uh, would uh, was um, prepared to uh, to break um, to not properly break his fast that what he was he was doing for so long. So uh, um, that shows uh, what a proper king like Maharaj Ambarish is. And then the aspect of women, women, Prabhupada says, are. Um, are an inspiration for men, that the whole uh, world is uh, is actually running because of women. So it's uh, it, he was saying that Caesar, um, Julius Caesar, he's a famous king. He was controlled by the power of Cleopatra. Cleopatra had m much influence on Caesar. So when women are actually the primary inspiration of men, so women actually run the world. But when women get degraded, and they're not able to, and they're, and they're, and they have such a tremendous influence on men. They're not able to, uh, and so men aren't, uh, men have very weak um, senses. So they fall into that trap. And then Varna Shankara come. Varna Shankara means like um, unwanted progeny. So women should be, uh, at, uh, women and men should be very high in their character. So Bhishma Dev is kind of actually, um, giving, um, describing the duties of a woman, the duties of a man. Um, 
so that's 28. Uh, and 29, this is when Uttarayan, Uttarayan when Bhishma Dev was uh, describing occupational duties, the sun's course ran into the Northern hemisphere. This period is described by mystics who die at their will. And so this, um, this is actually the time, uh, um, um, you hear about Bhishma Ashtami and Bhishma Panchak, but actually this happens during the winter solstice, I heard. This, so the winter solstice is actually coming up. It's a few days before, um, I think it's a few days, this year it's a few days after Gita Jayanti on the 14th. So the sun is running its course in the Northern uh, hemisphere. And, um, and it's described that people who, uh, Krishna even says in the Gita that people who die at that stage, they will be elevated. So, um, so some people uh, in the pro, uh, in the purport, Prabhupada saying that Bhishma Dev was kind of waiting for that, but Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says that Bhishma Dev does not need to, he doesn't need to wait for that because he's a devotee of Krishna. So why does he need to wait for this person or that person or waiting uh, waiting for that time? Um, he'll just go to Krishna anyway. Um, and 30, um, 30 is quite a long purport. Um, I will just, 30 and 31 are kind of the premonition for the thir, for 32. Um, so I will just chant the verses and it's the, actually very, very beautiful verses. Um, yeah, I'll just read, chant the verse. Tado pasam hritya gira sahasranir vimukta sangam mana adipurushe Krishna lasat pita pate chatar chatur buje puras tire milita drig vyad vyadharayat. Um, does someone want to read the translation for this? I can read. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 30 translation by Srila Prabhupada. Thereupon, that man spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men, stopped speaking and being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who stood before him forehanded, dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined. So this is a very beautiful description of what's happening. If you think of what Samadhi means, when you first think of what Samadhi means, you think of somebody, oh, you know, just, just like chanting there. But actually this is the Samadhi, that's for people whose senses are being dragged to different, um, uh, different sense objects. But for the devotee who's seeing Krishna, he's seeing the, the most beautiful form of Krishna. He cannot close his eyes. So when we come to the temple, we don't close our eyes for very long because we want to see Radha Natabar. We want to see Jagorni Thai. So Bhishma Dev, in his full meditative, um, uh, uh, um, at the height, at the crux at, at, of, of his meditative state, he has his eyes open and he's looking at the beautiful form of Krishna. And what is this Krishna? He was, uh, um, Sri Krishna stood uh, forehanded and dressed in yellow garments that glitter, uh, glittered and shine. So in the Kurukshetra war, uh, um, in the war, he wasn't forehanded. Krishna didn't show his forehand, but Bhishma Dev is seeing one form of Krishna that he likes in, in, in this form. So he's seeing um, the beautiful form of Krishna, yellow garments, and how and 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 it's described in thirty two that um, that our next week speaker, his face was smeared with dust, and there's perspiration coming down his face, and that and that beautiful vision, the beautiful vision of of that. Uh, of seeing that, you know, so Bhishma Dev is actually look, looking at looking at those things. Um, just kind of skimming through the purport. Um, in the momentous hour of leaving his body, Bhishma Dev set the glorious example concerning the important function of the human form of life. This is an italicized one. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the, in, the beginning of his next life. Let that sink in for a second. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. 
Therefore, if one is absorbed in the thoughts of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, he's sure to go back home, back to Godhead without any doubt. So uh, Prabhupada says uh, a famous story of the, I think the king and the king, uh, uh, the king and the, the king's daughter or something. And the king was uh, saying, you know, at the time of death, um, what attracts and, and I, when will the sex desire go away? And then the minister, I think, um, um, was like, okay, this hold, hold on a second. And then one day the minister comes to the king and he said, bring your daughter with you, come in. And then there was an ma old man, decrepit man dying on, a, uh, on his deathbed. And then he, um, he, and he came in and then the, the person started talking to him. Well, I, you're dying now and things like that. And then the daughter comes in, the man's eyes lit up. And then the minister could, uh, showed, you know, this sex, this desire to enjoy never goes. So the, the reason, so the point is, is that the subject matter, which tracks the dying man becomes the beginning of, you know, of his, uh, of the next life. So whatever you think at the time of death, that is what you, that is what you'll get. If you had the um, consciousness of an, you know, of, of a lower being um, that's not fit for human life, you will actually attain that. Krishna, uh, um, Prabhupada writes in one purport that Krishna is so kind. He's so kind to, every, uh, to everyone. <laughs> he said, if you want to, um, this human form of life is not good for sleeping all day. It is not good for sleeping and, you know, mating uh, 20 times a day. And, and doing that. So Krishna is so kind. He said, I will give you a body that is better for that. And you can do that for as, as long as you like. But then he says, but Krishna says, if you want me, if, if, if you want me, Sham Sundar, Radha Sham Sundar, and if you have that thoughts in me, Krishna is so kind, he will take you there also. But you really have to want it. You have to um, shed all, all coverings of Lobha, Pratishta, Puja, and, uh, and all these... Um, all these gross uh, manifestations of, uh, of honor. And you have to really have that unalloyed devotional service unto Radha Krishna. And once you have that, then you can, uh, you can go Antakale um, go and then you can go back home, back to Godhead. And Srila Prabhupada is giving the translations for Bhagavad Gita 8.5.15. I think this is Antakale Chamameva. And whoever at the time of death quits his body, remember me alone, at once attains my nature. Yeah. Um, I'm just, um, let me go to, let me just read this paragraph. Alakru, would you like to read this paragraph? Yeah, Prabhu. But even though the verses, you know, above, these are pretty powerful, even, not just 8.5, but even Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhavam and then um, Tasmat Sarvesu Kale Shu, the seven. You want, to read, you want to read those? Yeah, yeah, let's read that. Okay, read from 5 to 15 and someone else can read the paragraph. Okay. 8.5 And whoever at the time of death quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Parth, Arjuna, is sure to reach me. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable and who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. Someone else want to read the rest of the verses? Navin Krishna Prabhu or um. yeah I can read Prabhu can you hear me yes Prabhu so from where 10th yeah one who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself sorry 
covering up my screen. Yeah. In the moment, the Supreme Lord will certainly attain the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Number 11. Persons learn, learned in the Vedas who utter Omkara or great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, <coughs> one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. Number 12. The way yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual enjoyments, engagements. Closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind and the heart and the life air, at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. Number 13. After being situa situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable OM, the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks a supreme personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will suddenly reach the spiritual planets. Number 14. For one who remembers me with devotion, without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O Sannaprata, because of this constant engagement in devotion service. After attending me, <coughs> a great soul to our yogis in devotion never returned to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they have attained the highest perfection. Sri Bhishma Deva attained the perfection of quitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have Lord Krishna, the object of his attention, personally present at the time of death. He therefore fixed his open eyes upon him. He wanted to see Krishna, see Krishna for a long time out of his spontaneous love for him. Because he was a pure devotee, he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yogi. Simple bhakti yoga is enough to bring about perfection. Therefore, the ardent desire of Vishnu was to see the person of Lord, the most lovable object, and by the grace of the Lord, Sri Vishnu had his opportunity last stage of his bid. Hi, Krishna. It's very interesting that um, yeah, they're putting death uh, as something very dreary for the materialist as an opportunity. It also reminds me in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's that Leela in, uh, in Antya Leela of Haidas Thakur. Um, he wa he's wanting to leave his body and he wants to leave his body in the presence of the Lord because he, he couldn't feel, uh, he says, I, can, I, I don't know how I can live um, when if you leave before I leave. So let me leave before, uh, before you. And he leaves that body. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, such a, um, a very strict sannyasi who is not even supposed to see or touch a, a dead body. He takes uh, Chaita, uh, Haridas Chakur and he is supposed to have no family uh, connection, uh, connections or anything like that. He takes his dead body and, and then he try, and he's dancing through the streets of Jagannath Puri. And then he takes, it, uh, takes him and he performs the final rites for Haridas Chakur. So... So very similar desires that Bhishma Dev and Haidas Thakur had um, to, to each other. Um, let's, let's just finish with 31. Um, we can just, I can just read the Sanskrit and we, we can open it up for discussion. Um, Vishuddhaya dharanaya hata shubhas tat ikshayaiva shukata yudhashrama nivritta sarvendriya vritti vibramas Translation, by pure meditation, looking at Lord Sri Krishna, he, was, he at once was freed from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds. Thus, all external activities of his senses at once stopped and he prayed transcendentally to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body. Um, one, one thing to think about is why, what material inauspiciousness is that um, when you are wounded with arrows, traditionally um, blood comes out. When, uh, when, when you're poked with something, uh, blood comes out. Um, so blood is considered, uh, in an inaus is, is considered inauspicious. That's why if you look at that um, story in the Bhagavatam of um, Shishupal, I think Shishupal was the one, uh, uh, the Krishna threw the disc and then it sliced his head off, um, uh, right? It, it was Shishupal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when Krishna threw that disc, Shishupal's head was, it was cleanly sliced, no blood came out. 
And one of the reasons uh, that, that is given is that if blood would have come out, the whole yagya, the, the sacrifice that was being performed would have been nullified and they would have to clean it up and make it auspicious and do that. So, um, so when we're looking at this verse, um, all inauspiciousness, blood could be one of them. And then, but so it's, it's confirming that it might've been the body, bodily pains because all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds were taken out. And that means Krishna, Bhishma Dev, by Krishna himself, and Bhishma Dev could just focus on the beautiful form of Krishna, um, wearing the yellow clothes and having the, um, the dust on his face and the pers perspiration coming from his, uh, from his uh, face. Um, and, he could, and he could see this beautiful form. And all the activities of his senses at once stopped. And he prayed transcendentally to the controller of all living beings while quitting his body. So this is, a one, this is the best way of leaving your body. So many devotees have left their bodies in such auspicious ways. And um, there's a wonderful lecture series um, that I'm listening to now. It's by His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Maharaj. And Bhakti Tirta Maharaj, uh, he gave a lecture, Die Before Dying. And then I finally, I, I looked at that last lecture Bhakti Tirta Maharaj was, give, uh, was giving. And he was in 2005. You could see he's in complete Krishna consciousness. He's just like ready to, you know, ready, uh, ready to jump into the pastimes of Krishna. And it's not that his his body was aching; he was going through cancer, but he was just when the pure devotee leaves, his external senses start to go, but then his his concentrated uh, concentration on Krishna is very um, very fixed. So that's one of some of the things it's going, this is just a prelude to what's coming next week to 32. That's the Bhishma Stuti, the famous verses of Bhishma Dev. Um, and I just pray uh, at, at this point um, for forgiveness. If I have said anything or uh, that seemed to be against Siddhanta or against the culture we have developed, I please forgive me and anything um, good that uh, that you have come that has come from this. It's a um, gift from our parampara, from Srila Prabhupada and our spiritual masters. So I would like to open it up for comments, questions, discussion, and if there's time, uh, um, we'll take and take that. And especially, I will take corrections. That's that's first priority. So Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Any any questions or any any comments? Nothing, Krishna Prabhu. Uh, would you like to? Since you asked me, I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very nice, Prabhu. So one has to understand. Um, there's something from Bhagavatam. There's something from Mahabharat. There's something common. Hmm. It's called context and content. So Chaitanya Chand Prabhu always talks about. So, what is the content, the context of Ramayana? The person Valmiki wants to know who is the ideal person in all given situations. I want you to know. So, Narada Muni revealed, Brahma told Narada Muni to reveal, so Ramayana came about. So, entire the book, if you want to read any book, first people in general see the first, the last. Just an idea, get an idea. So, Bhagavatam, the context was a person about to die. And he only has seven days. What is his? Mahabharat is about duty. Like, you know, I'm going to live in this world. How do you live? But I'm, I know I'm not the body. I know I'm the soul. And I have to live as if I'm going to die every minute. But I'm going to live. While thinking like that, but while living, how do I live? So the person has to delineate very clear. Otherwise, you should not... Think like, you know, so when, when Hari Prabhu, let me ask you one thing, honest answer. When you read about a Brahmin, Vaishya, Sudra, and, uh, and then uh, Kshatriya, what are you thinking about yourself? So when we use they, so when, when somebody is reading Shudra, others, so I'm not Shudra, they, they are Shudras. Somebody is thinking they are Shudras. So that, is, that itself is a fundamental, uh, 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 like, you know, that is not what it says. Kalohi Sudra Sambhavaha. Everybody I'm, that's, that's right. Like, you know, everybody in, in Kaliva is Shudra. 
So now in general, what happens when somebody gives a class, like, yeah, he's talking about this, he's that person, it's for that person. So this is for this person. This is for me. So when I read Bhagavatam, we had to put ourselves in the shoes. I am actually worse than Sudra. And then if you see that it will be replied. So that is one point I wanted to make sure, like, you know, Sudra is time, Sudra is not talking about me. But now I have an opportunity. That's what the Brahma, uh, Bhishma. So Bhishma was talking Bhagavatam principles little, but Varnashram Dharma is more the context. That is why previous uh, administration, which has done so many uh, atrocities, and now the new administration is coming under the guidance of the Easter by the supreme will of Krishna. What he should do going forward, set an example for the future to follow. That's a, a Daivi Vaishnava Dharma. Vaishnava Dharma. Like, you know, Varnashram Dharma. What that is, it is it's emphasizing because when uh, you're talking about this, I was just referring Mahabharata. So I opened this my big thousands of books, Mahabharata. I have notes. And the last is Shanti Parva, Bhishma was giving. He was giving fear, King, what is your duty? How to take care of women? How to take care of Brahmins? How to take care of your wife? How to take care of children? How to take care of the Praja? Different situation, what to do, what not to do, how to do, all those things. Very elaborately, Mahabharata explains. But that's for individual person based on the role that person plays. But in essence, in the head, it's a Bhagavatam. Like, you know, in the Bhagavatam, as if I'm going to die every day. Anytime I may die. So that one has to balance that internally from Bhagavatam, externally, combination of Mahabharata and Ramayana is a being as an exemplary. Like a Ramayan principle, like as a mother or father, like a guru or husband, whatever it may be. But at the same time, at the same time, but how do we allow kick? It's called allow kick. Allow kick and allow kick. Being practical. I'm not saying, hey, see, Aishit Maharaj did that, Ambarish Maharaj did that, or um, with, uh, what is it? Haridas Thakur did that. Yeah, we understand the principle. I don't want to imitate that person. Like, you know, in Josh, it says, hey, I want to do this. He did that, he did that, I want to do that. That's good. But what you understand is that we are not a shooting stars in spiritual life. Slow and steady, daily doing the same thing again and again and again without any bore. Taking the juice out of and then ready for tomorrow. So that's where the principle is starting to do. That's what I want. I'm, of course, I don't give another bhagavad in that. I'm just saying the principle, like, you know, what, what is that? Essence of principles of various religious duties. 25, he was asking. Mm. So that's what, like, you know, we had to understand. So we had, that means we had to be honest to ourselves. I'm not here to compete anybody and nobody's competition to me. I'm not here to impress anybody. To let the, let the whole world know this is what I am. True to my nature. This is my nature. If I'm trying to artificially uh, prove that I'm this and that, it's a matter of time. We've done all those things in the past, like nothing new. <laughs> but now I want to do what is my true nature, my heart says. Even up to be wrong, even up to be wrong, but that's what I am. But I'm willing to learn, but this is what I am. I'm not trying to show which who I'm not. So that's one of the, one of the best uh, things which we can learn from uh, Bhishma. Okay, he fought his own guru for to protect dharma. He didn't even listen to whether we ask who is his own brother. To marry. He didn't even listen to his own mother to marry because when there is no dynasty to move forward, Chitra, Angada, they, they died. His mother uh, said, No, I will not. But Krishna told him to stand outside, other side, and fight for him. So, this personality for this story is very misleading, amazing for the people who did not understand. But those who understand is Mahajan. Like, you know, he did. Played many roles. That's one, one of the best. Uh, like you know, I, I like your point. The way he passed away, same thing like uh, Aridas Thakur. Amazing point. But anyway, that's a couple couple of things we should know. Conclusion: What I'm saying, you know, we should understand uh, who are we, where are we, our, what is our disposition, what is our duty, and then how to do, how to, what to do, and then be hard on ourselves, but accept others what they could do based on their their dharma, their based on their karma. And their true nature. Like, you know, Maha, um, Bhagavatam prints works on three things only. Bhagavad Gita. Sudharma, Swabhava, and Swarupa. 
So dharma, your duty, your duty changes with alaka duty. Depends on where he, where he was. At, at his home is different, his work is different, his parents is different. When he goes to mall, it's different. He's the same person. So dharma always changes. And uh, swabhava always changes his nature. He acts different places in different ways. Time plus circumstances. There's a kalapata. But swarupa will never change. Which is our eternal nature. What is swarupa? I am eternal servant of Krishna. In any given situation, how can I serve Krishna to please Krishna? That will never change. The one who knows that, when to fight, when to withdraw, when to apologize, whatever is needed. Whatever is needed for the, uh, the need of the hour. That's actually uh, uh, is, uh, the mature. It comes down the line. Like, you know, anyway. But we'll appreciate it. It is very, very uh, enlivening. Uh, I see that you prepared well. Thank you very much for keep this going on every week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ravinkar Shapu, for being the constant inspiration for the Shravanam Saturday. Without, without fail, you're always there. You're always there. So uh, it's, it's, it's nice to, it's nice that we can have some devotees with some experience always, always here. You know, that's, <clears throat> time is the best test. So um, we'd love to, um, we love to speak with you. And I, and I love the points you made. Um, yeah, that, that injunction is there, that Kala Shudha Sambhava, that everybody is um, in Kali Yuga is, is a Shudra. There's that famous story of um, in Kali, in, uh, in Satya Yuga, this, uh, the same, uh, the good person and the bad person stay in the different countries. And then in, uh, in Dwapara, Dwapara, they're in the same country. And then in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, no, no, in Treta and then in Treta and then Dwapara, it's like it's in the good and evil are the same family. And then in Kali, it's in the same person, you know. And then the, like on Monday, I could be a Brahmana, and then and then so Wednesday, I could be a Shudra, you know. So it's you it's are lucky. At least you are Monday Shudra. I can be the same minute also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's it's very it's very it's good to know know all these things. And but it's the Bhagavatam is a very reflective book it's it's something to be enlightened on like when we we speak bhagavatam it's kind of like we we're just enlightening what we what our reflections are what we're reading what we think it is but it's actually it's a book that it's it promotes internal change rather than mundane scholarship so it's um it promotes you know it's meant for the heart to change so when we read these things uh, this uh, this passing of bishma dev the heart is supposed to shift and it's supposed to uh, the, uh, in our internal lives. And then when we change that internal uh, that internal life, then when we whatever comes out, it's uh, it's 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 seen very clearly, you know. But if we no matter how many verses we memorize and things like that, um, we always the point is the Bhagavatam is about inter, internal development. So I really I really like that about how we go that. Thank you, Navin Krishna Prabhu. Um, is there any other comments, reflections, thoughts? Um, yes, Prabhu, I can uh, say something. My goodness, Navin Krishna Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you so much for... I, I should not have allowed you to go first because you literally answered my question that I had. And uh, now I I, I, <laughs> I don't have anything to ask. But I, I was actually uh, thinking that why, you know, why uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj went to Bhishma Dev, his last moments, last breaths, he's breathing. And he could have asked anything that how can I also become like you? How can I also think of Krishna at the time of that? Or how can I become a Mahajan? Or how can I become a pure devotee? But he's asking that, okay, tell me what is the duty? What is what is our duty? That is what uh, the 25th verse is saying. So you said rightly, right? The content and context and uh, he, and the, the, the essence from um, you know, Mahabharata. That, you know, we have to also... that All of these, you know, Krishna consciousness is... Uh, is it like breathing we don't think of that okay can i breathe now is it goes on forever it goes on continuously but when you know uh, what about our duties you know while we are here so that's what i was gonna stump hurry with that question that why he did not ask for <laughs> any uh, anything over devotional service you know it's very interesting and also maharaj uh, and bhishma dev also in his answers he's replying that you know about uh, different duties and he's that uh, that's another thing you know he he could have even once he could have said that okay after all this think of krishna 
after all this do some service for krishna he's saying these things you know different uh, castes and orders of life and you know do charity and then you know uh, duties of women and devotees but uh, he's not telling arjun uh, yudhishthir maharaj that okay now you you know also take some time out and chant hari krishna um and but you then, know why he did not say that please tell me because that is given he is raji uh, rajarshi hmm he is a rajarshi that means he has already proven his credibility he has already proven his credibility he already knows that season he is in that job krishna wanted yudhishthir to be rule the world that is already given Yeah. So that the, their Paramahamsa is already hmm. like you know, if you read Mahabharat, entire the life of this uh, was given. How, like you know, I'll tell you, probably on the thirteenth day in Mahabharat, after they went to Vana Parva, like in a forest, Bhima and Arjuna came with the weapons to this uh, term. Now, in given situation, sometimes thirteenth day is equal to thirteen years. So we already done. So now we are in ferocious mode. We want to go and fight. I'm going to annihilate entire. Uh, Kuru dynasty. Let's go. This was sitting there peacefully, and he just said, "Guess what?" Draupadi says, "Let's do it. Let's do it." And he says, "I'm not a coward." He says, "I'm not a coward. I'm a Kshatriya, but I know when to fight. Not a time." Do you think he says that? Do you think Ram doesn't know there's no golden deer? Why he went after that demon? There is some destiny. Things happens. We are. We do our job. We leave the rest to destiny. But show the destiny. We have to do our job first. That's where he delineate between personalism and impersonalism. Like you know, Dhamma Dalis, do it and stop. We always say, "Don't worry, Krishna will do." That's impersonalism. It, it says if somebody says Krishna will do, and the person's management is in wrong position, what is your duty? We should leave the uh, kingdom and go and back in the forest. If he, if he is not a shakti, that's not what he wanted. Yet yet the authority says that yet that tayi to jat sayat pramanam kusya lokas tadan vanti. Krishna himself, and there is nobody to fill the role of Vasudev or Emaraj or Indra or B or or Brahma. Krishna take the role. He will never ever give the role to anybody who is not qualified. Because why? That person who or she he will set a wrong example. will set a wrong example a name of so called compassion so called uh, religious all these things then it it, del- it it destroy the dharma he only puts who are capable that is given so now having that position now so your rajeshi now set the example and what to do so after first few years of edistra uh, uh, kingdom it was very pathetic no resources no no money everything is gone no is nobody but somehow That what he put the seeds when Parishit Maras came, that's what reap the benefits. Because before uh, uh, before Duryodhan um, left, the chaos, everything is missed. Mis- mis- but even though he was there, but he was doing only aftermath cleanup. Amazing Mahabharata, amazing Prabhu. So and then after when Parishit Maras came, then he saw the benefits. It's a golden years. Big seeds. So that's the reason to answer your question. Yes. So he did not tell all those things. Like it's not obvious. Mm-hmm. Like you know, Prabhupada says at, at the final uh, moment, I'll tell this and end it. Gira Swamaras, uh, or uh, everybody is in the, like, next to Prabhupada deathbed. He is leaving. Prabhupada, you're leaving. How do we? We all know this. I'm just saying to emphasize. How do we ru- run this organization? He never said chant Hare Krishna, do book distribution, build the temples. That's obvious. That that's obvious at individual level, collective level. What it says, intelligence and organization. It's not. If the matter, the matter, no, no, Krishna will give. No, Krishna as a deity will not give. You have to study for. That's your duty. When when Bangladesh thing happened, a lot of devotees talks about it. Why did Krishna did not protect? He will not. Why? Why is your product? You invited him as a deity. That's your duty to take care and feed him, dress him. Bathe him. All that's that is his form. He agreed. In that form, he cannot do. It's only couple of cases, like you know, here and there. Otherwise, um, he, he doesn't do. That's our duty. That's a, that's the same thing. He set an example. He is just saying that you do your duty as a king. That's reason he did not even tell that. That's a given. You know, Chandra Hari Krishna, reading Bhagavad Gita individually, you have to do. That's a default. 
but and was living how do you lead example so that everybody brings stage by stage to that level sorry go back to a little bit more no this is fantastic bro yeah i love love that answer but yeah i also was thinking that maybe he is you know now next verses are he is now showing with examples text 30 um, text 30 and 31 yeah. that how i was i was thinking that the, in this situation it's kind of like your uh, your actions speak so louder uh, so loud that we don't need to hear your words in hmm. as navin krishna prabhu was saying that um uh, the previous administration royally screwed up so bad that now he he's telling okay this is what you need to do and then when he just saw krishna's gaze he actually performed it more than uh, speaking it speaking it would have been would have been redundant to what he is going to do then so going and chanting as uh, you can say you know go to devotional service you know he tell he told you know what is required i uh, you know arjuna's and yudhishthir even though their administration the whatever they whatever they were administering that was their devotional service that was you know they taking care of the the things uh, the administration the pandavas the kauravas that was part of their devotional service so um yeah so bishma they just kind of perfectly showed how how to leave the body and if you look at um later on i think uh, 13th chapter of the first canto or 14th when krishna leaves the planet um uh, um they arjuna and yudhishthir they get the point you know you know once krishna disappears they they start okay and they, there's a time to attack and you know fight and and struggle and then but at the 13th chapter they're like okay krishna's left it is the natural course let's go to the forest and meditate so there's a time for that also yes but hmm. that they they utilize both both of those the same people when the time comes on krishna when they heard krishna left this walked out yeah. supreme renunciation like you know we go to bathroom and flush we don't even see you know it was beautiful glow jam last night but doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> like that they just walked away <laughs> just everything left so that there's a time for everything i does i work more does mouth work when the time comes we have to do that beautiful thank you thank you so much thank you is this anything else final thoughts okay um we'll call it a day we like to say a big thank you to uh alec crew is going to take an extended break uh for i think 6 weeks or something going up to bharat varsh and he's going to go. but he, but next week actually um um hari parshad prabhu has confirmed for next saturday so he's oh. going to he's going to be talking about um the bishma bishma press so, so please android has a little bit few more more time so other people join yeah of course um post it in all the groups yeah he's still uh, giving me the time so hari parshad prabhu has as uh, wanted to come so maybe alec prabhu will join from india uh, <laughs> he wants us if, yeah if all the stars align i will be joining from vrindavan <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Ah. be careful prabhu because of covid and all those things be extra careful yes thank you babu we'll definitely we are still in the body we have to take care of the body very present very present 10% jay bhagavatam ki jay hari prabhu ki jay alak hari prabhu ki jay hari prabhu ki jay i just saw my camera was on this whole time i'm sorry <laughs> Thank you, Thank you so much for such a great day.